We are going to estimate the lost retail sales in 2020 and we are going to do that using linear regression and using Excel. Let's start with a little bit of theory. My book, Forensic Analytics, second edition, chapter 11, time series data. A time series is a sequence of successive values of a series of data points. In English, we're going to be looking at the annual retail sales here by here. A time series analysis extrapolates the past series of data points into the future. We then compare our actual results to these predictions. Large deviations signal a change in conditions which might include fraud or errors. In a forensic accounting uh, context, the predicted values will be compared to the actual results and significant differences should be reviewed. The AICPA 2012, so this is a, an older edition, analytical procedures, they talk about the four phases. Number one, expectation formation. We're going to do that. Identification, compare the actual to the uh, expected. Number three, the investigation phase. Try and get some plausible explanations for the difference between the forecast and the actual. And lastly, the evaluation phase, where I take into account the difference and the plausible relationships or the plausible explanations. And I try to evaluate whether the unexplained difference is material. Let's get busy. Monthly retail sales. I will put a link in the description Monthly retail trade report. We can download our data. And when after we've downloaded it, it's a nice Excel file, it'll open quite easily. In 07, that's an O, 07, they have the total retail sales in millions of US dollars <coughs> for the year <coughs> in question. In this case, the year is 2020. If you click on the 2019 tab, go to 07, the total for 2019 will be there. Go to the 2018 tab, same story, 07, the total will be there, different total. I did that and I copied the totals to a whole new spreadsheet. I have the year 2009 to 2019. I'm going to use this data to forecast 2020. I have the actual retail sales in US millions of dollars for the those particular years. And again, I'm going to use this to forecast. To do my linear regressions, I'm going to add an extra field in here. I'm going to call it here either year or counter going from 1 to 11. This uh, just helps my linear regression a little bit and we'll see why in a moment. Let's go back to some basics. A few weeks ago in my class, we talked about the straight line between two points. We had the total cost per unit. We had 60,000 units, 80,000 units, 100,000 units. And at each of these units, the total cost per unit, um, which I suppose it should be the average cost per unit, the average cost per unit was going down. Here we go. One point, 60,000, eight and a half, 80,000, seven. You can remember from high school that we could get the slope intercept form of the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. I'll put this uh, link again in the description. And we had our ways of getting the equation for this line. We can see this would have a negative slope and it would uh, cross the y-axis somewhere around uh, 11 is my guess. We could get for this straight line an equation. We could get for this straight line an equation. But what the uh, regression analysis does, it's very clever, it will fit the best line for all three points. So it can't touch all three, but it'll cut through and it'll find the best equation for all three points, or we can have more than three points. 
Thanks to uh, Professor Tom McKee for this. I'll put a link as well. Simple regression. Instead of using MX plus B, they actually use beta, beta, beta 0, beta 1, x1, and the error term. And it's because when we go over here, there's no error term. We can fit an exact straight line between those two points. But now with the regression, we have lots of points. We fit the best fitting line and we have an intercept. We have a slope, but we also have an error term, uh, which is the difference between the line and the points. Beta 1 is the slope, the M. Beta 2, uh, beta 0, is the intercept, which is that. And we just, we just changed the terminology. I suppose I don't know why. We can use Excel. Data, data analysis, regression, and let's uh, get busy with Excel. Here I have it. I've called it counter over here. And we will go data. Data analysis, if you don't have this, you have to load it or install it. It's there. You just have to find it and install it. Regression, OK. The Y range is here. The X range, and I prefer this as opposed to that, is here. What happened? Better. We don't have labels. And I like this one here, the line fit plots. And this should be good enough. Uh, this is Excel. OK. And something happened. It really, the Y range is here. Much better. OK. Huh, got it. The regression output, I'm going to just round this to format cells. Number, we'll take a 3. There we go. R squared, 0.994. That's high. The highest it can be is 1, um, which me would mean there would be no differences between the fitted line and the actual line. 994. Most of the variation is explained by the change in x. Here are my coefficients. I'm going to take this quickly, and I'm going to format these cells as number, no decimals, thousand separator. Here we have it. The intercept is there. The slope is there. The slope is the annual change. These T statistics are off the charts. Format cells. Let's just format all of these here. Off the charts high. Format cells. Number two. We're good. These T statistics are very high. Our regression is good. When these numbers are greater than 1.96, uh, we have a significant, statistically significant relationship. Because I used year 1 to 10, we have the predicted values over here. And we have the residual, which is the difference between the um, two points, the actual and the expected, over here. And I'm just going to take this graph and we're going to do a better graph than this. But this is very nice. We have the actual y and we have the predicted y and they are so close that it looks as if it is. The points are on top of each other. What I'm going to go do now is I'm going to do my own graph and we're going to go back here. And what I'm going to do is predicted. And the way I'm going to predict is I'm going to go, this is here equal to the intercept plus one times the slope. 
enter. I have the predicted, but what I need to do is I need to, to keep going back to those numbers over here. It can't, uh, it can't move down. So let's see if I've done this correctly, because I can see it's dollar $B, dollar $17, dollar $B, dollar $18, and we go down. It's looking good. These are the predictions. Format cells. We'll format it as currency, no decimals. These are millions of US dollars. And here I have my predicted. So let me graph the actual. Insert. Not that one. Much better. This is the actual. And it looks very nice, but I don't really like the line there. So we will do format data series. I'm going to go here and I want no line. Much better. These are the actual points. I am now going to add the predicted. And the way that we will do that is select data. I'm going to add no name the predicted. OK. And now I have the two over there, but I'm going to change this in a while. And I'm going to edit this. And instead of using this, which I use for the regression, we'll do that over there. And we'll do OK. And we'll do OK. Now I'm just going to move this to a new sheet. And we'll call it retail sales, which we need to spell correctly. Better. I'm going to format this data series and the orange ones, we will format this data series. In this case, I would actually like a solid line. But I would like it to be a dash. And I would also like markers, marker options, no markers. Much better. And in fact, the last thing to tidy this up, format data series. We have a line. I want this to be black, and I don't want it to be so thick. I now have my actual, the blue dots. I have my fitted regression line, the dotted line, and it's a beautiful linear fit. What I need to do is to put a title, retail sales, year, and we're off to the races over here. But I still haven't finished. I need to go back here, and I need to get the prediction for 2020. And indeed, the prediction for 2020 will be equals the regression, the intercept plus the slope times. Go back here. I believe it's 12. So let me just, I'll enter it and then do OK. 11, and it is indeed. 12. This is my forecast for 2020. Let's go back to my data. And I think I can get that straight from here. Where was it? For 2020, the cumulative 6255046 predicted. Actual, 
and now I can see that the actual is less than the predicted and so I actually want to show a negative number here so I'm going to go equals actual minus predicted we're short difference we are short by 142,056 million US dollars let's get a percentage equal the difference divided by and now I'm going to to get the, the difference the percentage divide by predicted and I have to change this here and do format cells change to a percentage okay we're down my actual results with 2.22 percent below predicted my actual results were 142,056 million dollars less than predicted let's go back I have my answers over here this was a class project calculate the loss of retail sales in 2020 using the actual data and the forecast and the loss in retail sales 142,000 million just a few points here this number is a preliminary number for December uh, before we want to make any headlines we might want to wait until March when we get the actual number or we might want to assess how often and by how much these numbers are off by um, just 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 so that we know uh, and, and how much confidence we should have in our uh, pro projection here it is in fact what I did was in this case I took the percentage as percentage of the actual and I think that's wrong I want to leave it as percentage of predicted one more thing next time I'll do another video and instead of going through linear regression and using uh, that tool I will actually go data forecast sheet and what Excel will do is indeed if I put in the retail sales and I put in the counter it will it will generate the forecast without me uh, doing all that much work right over here it will have a lower and an upper confidence bound um, in this case it's projected ahead for um, three years and indeed we can actually use seasonal data here and time series analysis so this is an upcoming video subscribe and please click like if you liked it bye bye for now